welcome back to my channel. Today I'm back with a what's for dinner. I'm going to be sharing four easy and delicious dinners with y'all that we made over the past week. Two of the things that we made were actually new for us and are now added to our rotation. So I hope that y'all enjoy and get some ideas for your meal plan. I also wanted to thank ButcherBox for sponsoring this video. I'll have some more details on that to share with you in a bit, but right now we are hopping in with our first meal. This was one of the new things that we tried and really enjoyed. So I've had chicken and waffles before, but not exactly this way. The recipe that I was following for this today called for a gravy sauce and it is so good y'all. You have to try it. So right now what I'm doing is I'm mixing some all-purpose flour, salt and pepper, and garlic powder and this is going to be our coating for our chicken. The recipe for this actually calls for boneless skinless chicken thighs but we had boneless skinless chicken breast so that's what I'm using I'm just gonna cut them in half and then we're gonna tenderize them and then I actually went back and cut them in half again the other way so that we would have more chicken pieces I wanted to stretch these two chicken breasts as far as possible but we're gonna get those cut tenderized we are going to dip them into the flour mixture and then I've got a skillet heating up on the stove we will drop those into and they'll fry for about three to four minutes on each side can't remember exactly how long I just made sure that my chicken reached 165 degrees internally Now that my chicken is done, I'm going to remove that from the pan. We're going to add in a cup of chicken broth and a can of cream of chicken. And to that, we're going to add about two tablespoons of pure maple syrup, about a tablespoon of butter, and just give that a mix. I think the recipe called for a little bit of hot sauce but I left that out on this part. So while that simmers together I am going to get started on some waffles. I'm just using my mini dash for this. It made the perfect size waffles and then my favorite pancake mix from Sam's Club. Also, y'all let me know in the comments down below if you like your waffles soft or crunchy. I personally prefer soft waffles, but everyone else that I know prefers crunchy waffles, but I like them soft. Let me know in the comments down below, do you prefer your waffles soft or do you like your waffles crunchy? Once my waffles were done, you just take your chicken that we fried earlier, set those on top of your waffles and then you can pour the gravy over and then on the recipe it says to drizzle a little bit more syrup on top if you want a little bit of extra sweetness and so that's what I did and this was amazing it's definitely one of my new favorite comfort meals Before we get into our next meal, I wanted to tell you more about today's sponsor, ButcherBox. High quality meat has been something that my family and I have prioritized and we just can't go back. Ever since we started, we can't go back. Every now and then we do have to buy meat from the grocery store, but for the most part we get a lot of our meat locally and from ButcherBox. I love ButcherBox because everyone can have access to 
high quality meat and it gets delivered right to your door. ButcherBox believes in better. So for them, better means caring about the animals and our planet. It means improving the livelihoods of farmers. Ultimately, it means better meals enjoyed together. So that's why they deliver 100% grass-fed, grass-finished beef, free-range organic chicken, pork-raised, crate-free, wild-caught seafood, and more directly to members' doors. ButcherBox sources from farmers and fishermen who meet the highest standards for quality. They believe farmers should earn fair living wages, so they work with hundreds of farmers to raise the bar for the way animals are treated while making decisions that improve the outlook for future farmers. ButcherBox also believes that everyone can benefit from a little fresh air and natural light so their chickens are raised without cages, crates, or crowding. The cattle are free to roam on grassy pastures throughout their entire lives and the hogs are raised on pastures or in hoop barns with their natural tendencies, safety, and comfort in mind. You choose your box and delivery frequency. They offer five boxes, four curated box options, as well as the popular custom box, which is what I like to do because you can get exactly what you and your family love. ButcherBox ships your order frozen at peak freshness and packed in an eco-friendly, 100% recyclable box. You get box options and delivery frequencies to fit your needs. You can cancel at any time without penalty and shipping is free. To get started, click the link in my description and join ButcherBox today to get free bacon for life. You'll get a pack of uncured, unbelievably delicious bacon added to every box for the life of your membership plus $100 off. Again, thank you to ButcherBox for sponsoring this video. So moving into our next meal, we did a really easy sandwich night and just did some club sandwiches with fries on the side. And I'm also gonna show you guys how we do our homemade honey mustard. So to get started, I'm going to get the bacon into the oven. I just love to cook my bacon in the oven versus on the stove. It's so much better and less messy. So to make this bacon a little bit more sandwich friendly, I'm just cutting it in half. This is going to go in the oven on 400 for about 20 minutes. All the bacon's in the oven. I'm going to go ahead and get the toast into the air fryer. I find the easiest way to do our toast is with this little rack. Just pop it into the air fryer. You can do a lot at one time and yeah, it's just so much better than trying to cook a couple pieces at the time in the toaster. We don't even have a toaster, so our only other option would be to put it in the oven or do it on the stove. So I'm just going to set that on 400 for about five minutes. time I'm gonna show you guys how to do the homemade honey mustard so I've shown this before but I do have a lot of new subscribers so I'm gonna show you guys again but it's really easy a lot of you probably know how to do this but if you don't it's just mayonnaise mustard and honey that's it I don't even measure the ingredients I just eyeball I always do about two parts mayonnaise one part mustard and then one part honey and give it a mix and then from there I can taste it and see if it needs more of something and then I'll go ahead and add it and you just do that until you get the flavor the way that you like it and if you wanted to make this into a dressing for a salad you would add a little bit of red wine vinegar but we're going to be using this as a dipping sauce so I'm not going to do the vinegar so now that my toast is done I'm also going to do the fries in the air fryer these will cook on 400 for about 20 minutes and my bacon has finished so I'm removing that from the pan and getting it on to a paper towel lined plate so that that excess grease can drain off the bacon but I'm going to go ahead and start building my club sandwich. I'm going to spread some mayonnaise, sprinkle on some pepper, some bacon, a pretty good chunk of ham. I'm using black forest, a slice of cheese and then I'm going to go in with another piece of toast spread some mayonnaise on that along with some pepper and then this is where I will add in the lettuce and tomato. I 
and that was dinner this is something really quick and easy you can just throw together to my fries i sprinkled on some blackened seasoning i like blackened seasoning but the rest of my family does not so i just sprinkle it onto mine so the next night was taco tuesday we did just simple tacos and i made some spanish rice on the side the rest of the family actually had tostadas it's where you heat your tortilla shell up in the oven and it makes it crunchy like a giant chip but i just like regular soft shell tacos and so that's the way that i have mine but i'm gonna get started with the taco meat first go ahead and get that cooking my meat was still frozen so it was going to take a little bit of time for that to cook through but while that's going i'm going to make a pico to top our tacos with i love pico it's one of my favorite things i've just got some cucumber here i'm going to get that diced up and then we had some tomato and onion left over from the previous night when we made our club sandwiches that needed to be used before they went bad and so I'm gonna add those into the pico as well just gonna chop them up really fine once we get it all into the bowl we're gonna add some salt and pepper and a little bit of lime juice and that's really all I do to make my pico here to my pot we are going to get started on the Spanish rice I'm gonna drizzle in some olive oil and then a cup of white rice and get that toasted up I am following a recipe for this so I will link it down below for you guys so the rice only takes a couple of minutes to toast up but once it was toasted I added in a cup of chicken broth a cup of tomato sauce a little bit of garlic powder and then we're gonna give it a stir and then bring it back up to a boil and then once it starts boiling we're going to reduce the heat and place the lid on for about 20 to 25 minutes so coming back over to my taco meat I didn't have to drain it because it was pretty lean so I'm just going to sprinkle on some taco seasoning and about a half a cup of water and we're going to just let that simmer for a few minutes so over here on my pan I've just lined it with some foil I'm gonna take a few tortilla shells and just place it onto my pan I'm gonna spray both sides of the tortillas with some olive oil and then you're gonna pop them in the oven on 400 for four minutes on one side and then you're gonna take them out flip them cook them for an additional four minutes and then they'll be ready but like I said I was eating mine just on a regular taco shell so I've just put some of that pico on top some shredded cheese and some Taco Bell Chipotle sauce. I forgot to show you guys the bottle, but it's the Taco Bell Chipotle sauce. I think I got it from Walmart and the Spanish rice on the side. This next meal was one of my favorites. I have been seeing this recipe circulating on Facebook and I've been dying to try it, but it is a Cajun steak and shrimp. I think the recipe, they put chicken in there, but I kind of felt like that was a little unnecessary. And so I just did the steak and shrimp. These are ribeye steaks. I think on the recipe they cut theirs into strips, but I'm going ahead and cutting my steak into bite-sized pieces. This is going to go into a Ziploc bag. And to my bowl, I'm adding in some olive oil, some soy sauce, a little bit of Worcestershire. I ran out. I needed more, but I just used what I had. And then we're going to add in some garlic powder. Um, some Old Bay and some hot sauce, some onion powder and some pepper. 
I'm going to put the recipe down below for you guys so that you can get the exact measurements. But basically, you're just going to mix this together. Pour this in the bag with your steak. And the recipe says to let it marinate preferably overnight or six to eight hours. I did not pay attention to that part. And so I just let mine marinate while I got everything else ready. But I'm sure it would have been a lot better if I could have let my steak marinate a little bit longer. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and get my penne pasta going here in the back. And then we're going to come back over and season up the shrimp for this dish. So these are large uncooked shrimp and I made sure to take the tails off, make sure they had nothing on them. And then we're going to season them with some olive oil, Old Bay, and salt and pepper. Over here in the skillet, we're going to go ahead and place in those shrimp and you just cook them until they turn pink. Once they're pink, they're done. It doesn't take long at all. Once the shrimp is done, I'm just taking that out of the pan. We're going to give the pan a drain and then add in about a tablespoon of olive oil and our steak. point you'll just cook your steak how you like it. I cooked ours until it was well done and then I added in some minced garlic, some butter. I let it cook for an additional minute or two and then I went back in and added my shrimp to the steak along with a jar of alfredo sauce and the penne pasta. But this was something new that we had this week. Like I said I've been seeing the recipe floating around on Facebook and I had really been wanting to try it and I'm so glad I did because it's one of our new favorites. So I really hope that y'all enjoyed this video and hopefully you got some dinner inspiration from it. Again, if you want to check out ButcherBox, I will have the link in my description box. Remember that if you join ButcherBox today, you get free bacon for life. That's a pack of uncured, unbelievably delicious bacon added to every box for the life of your membership plus a hundred dollars off so definitely check it out don't forget your butterfly emoji in the comments down below as always i appreciate you guys watching and i'll see you next time bye